If you lost the last nut of your anchor bolt and you want to replace it, first you have to determine the kind of thread on this piece of hardware. In this video, I will show you how to determine the thread pitch for metric threads or the TPI number for inch based threads and this determination or calculation method will work for any of the inch based thread standards. I wrote UTS, Unified Thread Standards there. It works with any of them or the metric as well. Uh, from then on uh, we will take the concept of pitch and uh, we'll explain how tightening or preloading a bolt actually works and we'll uh, then move on to uh, briefly go over one of the ways to preloading a bolt in a calculable or predictable manner is the turn of the knot method and we'll <coughs> briefly mention its pros and cons. Let's get started with pitch. Just what is meant by pitch? The pitch is a horizontal distance which is a distance a horizontal distance on a thread from crest to crest it is the distance the knot advances in one turn it's important that you understand and memorize the concept and definition of pitch that pitch represents a horizontal distance the knot moves forward in one full turn so if the edge of the knot was at this crest if it rotates around once the edge of the knot will be here if it rotates around one more time the edge of the knot will be here if it starts at this root here where the edge of the knot is in one full turn it will be there and in one more turn it will be there this is pitch. A pitch is a horizontal distance. It's very important for the concept of uh, preloading or tightening a bolt. So this is how you determine the actual number of it. You grab a tape measure and you line it up like so. You line up any of the crests or any of the roots. For example, but we'll go with crests on this one and we'll go with the roots on the other one on a, on a metric example you line up one of the crests with uh, one of the lines here this is half an inch actually it's going the other way around this is zero and uh, this is going to be half an inch for uh, it's easier to read for from your point of view oops and we count the number of uh, turns from here on over a certain distance this is one starting from here so that's zero one full turn two three four five six seven eight and nine full turns over a distance of half an inch now let's double it so that's 18 turns over a distance of one full inch and I'm gonna write that one now 18 turns over a distance of one full inch or 18 turns per inch 18 TPI 18 TPI is typically how threads are specified so if you counted the number of turns over an inch on this one you would come up with a number say say 8 TPI or whatever it is on the big anchor bolt on this one it is 18 teeth per inch and that also means that the pitch from one crest to another crest or from one root to another root same thing is exactly 1 18th of an inch it's a fraction don't worry about it if you want convert it to decimal if you want convert it to metric hey in, in a decimal format it's gonna be 0 0.055555 it's an infinite decimal and in uh, and in metric, uh, if you multiply this number by 25.4, you're going to get a 1.41 millimeter distance. Millimeters, decimal inches, fractional inches, it doesn't matter. It, has a, it takes 18 turns to cover a length of an inch. Any knot would need 
to turn around 18 times to advance a distance of one full inch. This is very important for the concept of pitch. Let's quickly look at a metric example. Just super fast here. Say, how about, how about we line up those ones there. Okay. So, uh, on a metric, uh, determining the thread pitch is very similar to an imperial uh, method. Like I said, they are totally uh, uh, similar. So let's start at this uh, crest, or you know what I said, let's start at a root. So I'm going to set it put that way, just finick it, hold up. There we go. That's good. Let's start at a root on this one. So we start here at this particular root, and I lined up one up with this centimeter line conveniently. And here is turn number one, and it's a little more than a millimeter. Turn number two, turn root number three, root number four. Uh, it seems to me that uh, the fourth root here, so the knot taking four full turns, after that it travels five millimeters, it seems so. You can see that, that from this root to this root, the distance is slightly more than a millimeter and actually it is like a millimeter and a quarter but let's double it and see if it checks out over a longer distance again so that would be the fifth the sixth oopsie the seventh and the eighth root yes it does check out the eighth root lines up with uh, another multiple of five millimeters so we have a total distance of ten millimeters and we have exactly, that's the 8th turn, 8 turns, and that gives us a pitch of 1.25 millimeters. So on this one, this is the pitch, 1.25. Now, 1.25 millimeters, and on the previous one it was 18 dpi. Now, how preloading and tightening works. I have this piece of foam here and okay this is gonna be a bolt now. When the nut can advance on a thread unrestricted without clamping any wood or metal or any material together it will just it will just spin happily ahead. If it's got something in the way here say here the knot will only come up to the uh, edge of this uh, surface here. From here on, and this is important, from here on, from this obstacle, if the knot is forced to travel along the thread, it will so, but it will not get closer to the head of the bolt. See, if the bolt is the knot, here is a, the nut is traveling here, this is nut, and it's traveling in that direction, and this is the, this is say the nut hits something here, that it can't go past by, and then maybe I'll put it in the, well, I can't move it, sorry, because I wrote it on the whiteboard, not on the projector, okay, so, if the nut can't go forward but is forced to turn, it will turn and it will travel along the thread. But in the meanwhile, this is what's happening to the bolt. It stretches. If this is the head of the bolt and this is a nut, and if the nut is forced to move along the thread but it can't because there is something in front of it it's going to be clamping the material with a greater and greater force and will elongate the fastener proportionately to the amount of travel that is forced to take forward okay for example if you take a quarter turn on this nut it will stretch the bolt a little 
If you turn this knot half a turn, it will stretch the bolt more. Like I said, if you take actually careful measurement, measurements on the bolt, you will see that it actually physically stretches the bolt. And if you take, uh, say, one full turn on this knot from the point again, when it cannot move forward and it starts clamping the material, it will stretch the bolt to near breaking point and will actually strip the threads of the bolt or the nut, whichever is softer. So that's how the concept of tightening a bolt works or preloading a bolt. And it's important that if the, that uh, depending on the coarseness of the thread, see this one is a coarse thread and uh, this one is a super fine thread. Just see them side by side. It is obvious that the distance a knot would travel on the skinny bolt is way less than the distance the knot would travel on the big anchor bolt. So a quarter turn on the skinny bolt is tightening or preloading the bolt less than a quarter turn on the anchor bolt. Because a, uh, because a quarter turn means different lengths. Uh, it was a one point on, on, the, on the imperial boat, it was 1.4 millimeters. On the metric, it was 1.25 for one full turn. It does make a difference if it's 1.25 or 1.41. So the, the if, if a bolt is forced to travel along a corset thread, a half a turn, it will tighten it or preload it more than if it's for, forced to turn or forced to travel along a thread with a smaller pitch. That's why engineers, that's why they are there for, mechanical engineers, determine uh, how many uh, turns you should be taking with a knot and it will only work for that size of knot in that particular application okay so don't uh, don't take it home and work on your car and eyeballing uh, torque specification uh, for for any of your vehicles for ve working on vehicles have a torque wrench please a calibrated one uh, on the job site in uh, construction and uh, working on steel beams, the turn of the knot method works very fine. And like I said, uh, if you exceed the specifications, instead of a quarter turn, you go half a turn. The more and more uh, you turn, the uh, greater and greater uh, force you exert on the knot, or oh, sorry, on the bolt, and it will stretch longer and longer. So that would be uh, its pros and cons. Uh, you have to watch out. Uh, how much you actually turn on the knot and it doesn't universally apply to any bolt uh, and uh, not even if they are the same size because some might be softer metal and some others might be harder metals and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's pros sorry that was cons and pros it's it's simple you don't need to carry a torque wrench with you so that's basically the uh, lay of the land and uh, calculate determining the pitch of a thread until you are proficient with it.